Hey everybody, it's Mr. N, and we are going to do this lesson where we're going to uh, talk about indirect proofs and uh, inequalities in one triangle. So let's first start off by what an indirect proof is. Uh, sometimes when we have proofs, um, going at them in a direct manner, which means step by step, do this, do this, do this, and then you get to your conclusion, sometimes can be like super hard, impossible even. Um, so there, we have another method called an indirect method. So let me explain to you what an indirect method would be. Suppose, uh, here's my example. So suppose Joey had an umbrella with him when he walked inside the room. But the umbrella was not, it was not wet. Well, you can conclude that it's not raining, right? Because the umbrella is not wet, so your conclusion would be that it's not raining. That was an indirect conclusion. You do not know. You did not go look outside. You just made an observation based on what you noticed in an indirect manner. That's an indirect proof. That's what an indirect proof would entail. So how we do indirect proofs? Well, first you got to begin by assuming the conclusion is false. We're going to do indirect proofs mainly in paragraph form in here, so uh, just be aware of that. So First, assume the conclusion is false. Then you show that your assumption leads to a contradiction. So it's proof by contradiction. So basically, you're assuming something that's false, but you're proving your assumption is false. Therefore, the opposite must be true. Okay? So I first identify the conjecture, assume the opposite. Okay? So assume the negation is true, go through and do direct reasoning to show that this is not the case, that this conclusion is false, and because the conclusion is false, your assumption, the original, must be true. So, in other words, assume temporarily the conclusion is not true, region logically until you contradict a known fact, then point out temporarily the assumption must be false and that your conclusion must be true. So again, stating this in another manner, what you're doing is you have a given, you have a proof. You take the proof, you assume the opposite, but you show that this contradicts your given. And so since it contradicts the given, it can't be true. So it can't be false, so it's true. All right, so let's see what we got here. Next, let's relate some, this is a whole separate thing now, so let's relate the sides and angles of a triangle. And here's what we got. If I have, let's use a different pointer, if I have this triangle where this is my largest angle, this will be my longest side. If this is my shortest angle, that will be my shortest side. So there's a direct correlation between the biggest angle and the longest side opposite it and the shortest side with the shortest angle opposite it. So these two correlate, those two correlate. Bigger side, bigger angle, bigger angle, bigger opposite sides. So again, we're always talking about the opposite sides. All right, so let's see what we got next. So this gives us our triangle longer side theorem. This is what your author calls it, but we will go with that. Okay, so, um, and this is exactly what I said here. If this is eight and that's five, Okay, that means angle C must be bigger than angle A. Okay, because angle A correlates to this 5, angle C correlates to the opposite side, which is 8. Since 8 is bigger, angle C must be bigger. And that's what this triangle longer side theorem says. The converse is this one, where now this time you have the bigger angle. So if angle A is larger than angle C, which this is 50, that's 30, that means side BC will be bigger than side AB, okay? And typically, this relates to what we call the triangle inequality theorem. And so any two sides of a triangle right here, if I take AB plus BC, that's got to be greater than AC. If any two sides of a triangle that you add up are not larger than the third, then you can't make a triangle. And this example is showing you that right up over here. So now let's take a look and do a couple examples of this. And 
here we have this. We've got 5 and 15. Well, remember, if I add up any two sides, it's got to be larger than the third. So let's call the third side x, just hypothetically for right now. 5 plus 15 has to be greater than x, just like x plus 5 has to be greater than 15, just like x plus 15 has to be greater than 5. Well, over here, 20, x has got to be less than 20. Over here, x has got to be greater than 10. Over here, x has got to be greater than a negative number, so it doesn't matter. So as far as that third side, what must the third side be? be between what two values? Well, it's got to be bigger than 10, but less than 20. Now, I will have you do something right here. I want you to take a look at the two numbers we had. We had 15 and 5, okay? How does 15 and 5 relate to 10 and 20? I did this a mathematical way to show you that how I got 10 and 20, but I want you to look at the 15 and the 5 and see how you can come up with those two numbers because there's a shortcut to doing this. Pause the video and when you are done thinking about it you can unpause and continue on and let me show you the shortcut. For this next problem right there I'm just gonna do it the shortcut way. I'm gonna say the third side x, we'll call it x, has to be between 34 and 6. What did I do? Well, I took 20 plus 14, I added them, I got 34. 20 minus 14, I subtracted them, and I got 6. Now, let me show you algebraically that this works. Remember, 20, if I had my third side as being x, 20 plus 14 has to be greater than x. 20 plus x has to be greater than 14, and um, 14 plus x, 14 plus x has to be greater than 20. So solving this one, x, and this is going to be 34, so x has to be less than 34. That gives me a negative, so I'm going to not use that one. And over here, x has to be greater than 6, so that means x has to be greater than 6 but less than 34, which is what we did with the shortcut. Now doing the last one, be careful with this one, take a look at what we got. Let's call our third side y this time because I'm already using x's. So that means I'm going to add those two. I'm going to get 10x. I'm going to subtract. So y has to be less than that. And I'm going to subtract those two. I'm going to get 4x. So this time our side we called y has to be between 4x and 10x. Okay, let's take a look. What else we got? We're going to switch the page. And we're going to do a few more examples. We are going to do this next one. In class we'll do the student journal ones, but right now I'm going to do an indirect proof for you. It says use an indirect proof for each. For this first one we're given triangle ABC where AB is congruent to BC and we need to prove that angle A does not equal 90. So I'm going to draw triangle ABC here real quick. A, B, C, and we are told that AB is congruent to BC and we have to prove that the measure of angle A this one right here is not 90 so some of us can see that because if it was 90 right then this would correlate with that right isosceles triangle theorem and that means this has to be 90 but we can't do that we can't have two 90 degree angles in a triangle so how do we write this as a proof this is really hard to prove indirectly so we have to prove this indirectly um, so here's what we're gonna do we're going to say, and we're going to do this as a paragraph proof, so I'm not going to do a t-chart. We're going to first assume the opposite of this. So temporarily assume that the measure of angle A equals 90 degrees. Okay, oops, the angle A. So now, if angle A equals 90 degrees, then triangle A, B, C is a right, right triangle. Thus, side B, C is the longest 
side by the larger angle, larger side theorem. And that's the one we had just talked about. And to be honest with you, I can't remember the, uh, that's what your book calls it, but I can't remember the, if there is a different name for it, but that's what we're going to go with right now. So larger side, long, long, larger angle theorem, right? So that means um, that this has got to be, that we said over here, B, uh, C has got to be the largest side, but we are given that AB is congruent to BC. Thus, triangle ABC would have two right angles, which is impossible. Thus, our assumption over here that the measure of angle A is 90 is false. So it can't be 90. Therefore, the measure of angle A does not equal 90. And that's how we do an indirect proof. That one was a little bit longer right now. So let's see what the next one looks like. So given transversal T cuts lines A and B, the measure of angle 1 does not equal the measure of angle 2. We have to prove that the measure of angle 1 doesn't equal the measure of angle 3. Okay, so what we're going to do is, again, as we've said before, we're going to contradict the proof. So we're going to assume temporarily, now I'm going to abbreviate a little bit, okay, temporarily, that the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 3. So if 1 equaled 3, then by the corresponding, or we should say the converse of the corresponding angles postulate, A is parallel to B. Thus, the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 3 by the alternate interior angles theorem. However, I'm going to do it here because I'm running out of room. However, we are given, right, we are told that the measure of angle 1 does not equal the measure of angle 2. Thus, our assumption is false, and the measure of angle 1 does not equal the measure of angle 3. So there you go. Proof by contradiction, indirect proof. Let's do a few more examples over here. Name the longest and sh shortest side of each triangle. Well, if that's 65, that's 70. This is going to be less than that which would be 45, actually. So the longest side is going to be longest, will be BC, because that corresponds to the largest angle. And the smallest will be AB, because that corresponds to the smallest angle. Over here, that's 54, that's 90, which would make this 36. So the longest will be opposite the 90, DF, and the shortest will be opposite the 36, which will be uh, EF. All right, over here, this is 60, and that's 40. That gives me 100, so that would make that 80. So the longest would be GI. I think that's an I. And the shortest would be opposite the 40, HI. Okay, and finally, on the last one, that's 120, that's 29. Subtracting from 180 would give me this one to be 31. Okay, so that means the longest would be opposite there, so that would be JL. And the shortest 
would be opposite the 31, which would be KL. All right, let's slide this up and just do two more problems over here. It says, which segment is the longest if the triangles were drawn to scale? So on these, we got to be careful. Okay, I'm going to uh, enlarge this just a little bit so we can kind of get a little bit better picture of what's going on. Which segment is the longest if the triangles were drawn to scale? Okay, so over here, this is 60, that's 58. Give me 62 here. And this one, 59, that's 60, which would give me 61 here. All right, so I'm going to look at each triangle separately. I'm looking for the longest. If I look at the left triangle, the longest on the left would be BD, okay? But if I'm looking at the longest on the right, the longest on the right would be DC, right? Let's erase this, make this look a little bit somewhat better here, make my D look a little bit better, okay? so. BD, though, is part of both triangles, but since it's part of both triangles, it's the longest for this left triangle, but the short, not short, not the longest for this one, so that means DC must be the longest overall between the two. Let's look at the next example. So this is 90 degrees, that's 45, which gives me an angle 45 degrees there, but these two are parallel, so there's my transversal, there's my Z, so this is 45 in here. So this is not 90 in there. It would actually be 92. So looking at this triangle, this is the longest side. But looking at this triangle, they share this common side. This is the longest side. So that means HI, this right here, has to be the longest between the two. So you have to compare the two and take a look at what is bigger between them. All right, and that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video.